Good morning, everyone. Welcome to PG Partshala. I am Dr. Pankaj Tandon from Atomic Energy Regulatory Board, Mumbai. The subject on which we are talking is biophysics, and the module on which we are discussing today is present principles of SPECT. What is SPECT? SPECT is nothing but single photon emission computed tomography, and we are going to discuss about this particular topics and its principle in the next few slides. As we discussed, single photon means when we are doing the conventional nuclear medicine examination by using technetium, because technetium 99M is the workhorse of conventional nuclear medicine and it emits 140 kV photons. It is a single photon. Finally, emission computed tomography because it is emitted from the body. Committed tomography work has come from because the camera takes the tomogram of the organ, it means slices of the organ, finally it reconstructs to give an image. It means SPECT is a medical imaging technique that is based on conventional nuclear medicine imaging and tomographic reconstruction method. The important thing which we should realize in case of SPECT or normal x-rays is, when normal x-rays are taken, what exactly happened? It takes the snap. When it takes the snap, it gives only two dimensional images, but our organs are in 3D shapes. In order to take or in order to get the image of three dimensional, when the function want to see it in all the directions, in order to know the depth of that particular disease, SPECT is a very useful device. And by different reconstruction techniques, you are going to get an image. The image reflects reflect functional information about patients. We know it, this spect is different from X-rays or CTs or MRI. CT, MRI, X-rays give anatomical picture, but spect, which is a modality being used in nuclear medicine, gives the functional as well as anatomical both. When we know the functional information, doctor can able to formulate the regime, how the patient is to be treated, very, very important. Until and unless you know the location, until and unless you know the function, because if you see the kidneys by any other method, you can able to see it. But when you see with, when you see the ejection fraction, you can able to find out, okay, this kidney, one right kidney is functioning more better than left kidney and then accordingly, the treatment can be planned. SPECT gives information based on the spatial con concentration of injected radio pharmaceutical in contrast to other medical imaging modeling used for clinical diagnostic purposes. We are emphasizing more and more that this particular gives spatial concentration. It means all different directions. It may so happen if you see the lung, if you want to scan the lung, you see that one particular point is a hot spot. If you want to see the kidneys, you can find it is functioning 70 percent. One kidney is functioning, some other kidney is functioning 60 percent. Heart, how the viability of the muscles that all being done by using nuclear medicine and by using SPECT camera. Now, when we talk about planar images, that is 2D, X-ray or gamma camera, which was the earlier used modality in comparison with SPECT, which gives a 3D, because the camera is rotating all around the patient, taking the tomograph re by using reconstruction technique, you are creating an image. What are the advantage of tomography images? You take an apple, you cut in different slices, you can able to know which particular slice is having a problem or where that particular slice is having some issues. When you re re uh, reconstruct back, you get an apple back. It is the same principle being followed in case of tomography images. A basic problem in conventional radionuclide imaging is that the images obtained are 2D projection of 3D source distribution. You know all organs are in 3D shapes. Now if I want to take an image in two dimensional way, what will happen? You get only image in a XY, XY form. But 3D means in the Z, the particular depth at which 
the problem is there that what's the advantage of tomographic images images are structured at one depth in the patient thus are obscured by the superposed image overlying underlying structures now what will happen let us suppose i keep the camera in front of the body the patient is lying on the couch and the radiation is being emitted from a photons are coming coming out from that particular organ what what does the detector does detector takes an image like an x-ray it takes a shot it takes an image but what will happen if the disease at certain depth the radiation or emission which is taking place from that particular organ is being obscured being attenuated because of some overlying structures you cannot able to really get the good quality image and if the quality of the image is not good doctor cannot able to decide the treatment regime one solution is to obtain tomographic image that's the reason we thought okay, why don't we rotate the camera all around the patient at different degrees in different time frames collect the images reconstruct it and make a 3d image tomography images are capable of providing more accurate quantity quantitations of activity at specific location within the body that is why spec is more popular than a gamma camera without spec tomography images we are talking about and i already mentioned what does tomos means tomo in a greek word is for cut or section as i explained in a very simple way you take an apple cut in different slices each slice is one tomogram modern computed tomography ct techniques including positron emission tomography or single photon emission computed tomography and x ray ct used detector system rotated around the object so that many different angular views can be taken and finally by using reconstruction technique you can able to get the image in three dimension three dimensional form what does it mean it requires a mathematical algorithm it's not a simple task when you are going to rotate the camera all around it and capture the image when you are going to do the acquisition of the images finally you have to do what you have to really process those images when you are doing the process of the images you require some kind of algorithms finally mathematical computations some techniques are required some formulas have to be written some programs have to be written and really that only makes the reconstruction techniques and make the give the images in a 3d mode reconstruction images from multiple projection of the detected emission from radionuclide within the body is known as emission computed tomography we are not talking about attenuation we are not talking about transmission we are talking emission word because radionuclide or radiopharmaceutical i should say when injected or administered in a human body goes to the particular organ it emits radiation you are going to generate tomographic images and that's why it is called emission computed tomography what is spect i think by this time i am able to explain you spect but we should know spect is a short form of single photon photon emission computed tomography as its name suggests gamma rays are the sources of information rather than x rays emission in conventional ct scans ct scans give x rays where gamma rays are coming out both are having photons but the origin is different why spect is required when we have other modalities available in our country like x rays like ct mri why we need an spect because spect allows us to visualize functional information about patient specific organ or body system that is why spect is required otherwise you can get the examination done by ct or mr or x ray anything but we are not worried about anatomical picture we want to know the disease how the organ is functioning because some of the disease which has been not been detected by other modalities spect and pet can able to do that the spect is one of the major most important modality being used in nuclear medicine for the functional purposes and as well as anatomical also when we see the theory and instrumentation of spect spect is a technology used in nuclear medicine where the patient is injected with radio pharmaceutical which will emit gamma rays we are talking about spect single photon it means technetium technetium is a work horse which means 140 kv gamma rays we seek the position and concentration of radionuclide distribution by the rotation of photon detector array around the body which acquires data from multiple angles what does it means you are basically rotating the device all around the patient and 
and basically acquiring the photon which is coming out from the patient and then creating an image. Each of the cameras collect a matrix of values which corresponds to number of gamma counts detected in that direction at one angle. Images can be reprojected into three dimensional one that can be viewed in a dynamic rotating format on a computer monitor. This is facilitating the demonstration of pertinent finding to the referring physician. It is the most important point that if you can able to detect the disease or if you can able to get the images or if you can get know the function of the organs at certain depth, physician have a challenge they can able to treat you much much better way. As started rectinal scanner then came gamma camera we are talking about rectinal scanner we are talking about gamma camera. Gamma camera is, is an instrument which utilize many components like camera, collimator, scintillation detectors, photomultiplier tube, positron circuitry, data analysis computer. What does it happen? A patient who has been administered radio pharmaceutical is emitting some kind of radiations. What it does? It comes to the collimator. What is the function of collimator? The function of collimator is to see to it that only those radiations which is coming parallel in whole or pinhole collimator or diverging collimator or converging collimator that only goes to the detector. Detector is nothing but sodium iodide thalamatic crystal. It impinges on detectors and what will happen? A light photon comes out. This light photon comes out and finally it comes from a PM tube where electrons being generated and because positron circuitry after the thing we have a computer where the analysis is done and you get a quality image. This is a very very pictorial uh, graph of the SPACT and you can able to see that the detector is rotating all around the patient and this is the second generation initially we used to get the images in uh, two dimensional board but when it rotates around the body you get the image in three dimensional board but again imaging is not that simple like in x-rays but here like in CTs or MRI you require some kind of softwares. Here we require some kind of softwares, algorithms to generate the images in three dimensional board. But the advantage is that in this kind of thing you are not getting in two dimensional image, you are getting three dimensional image and moreover, moreover you are getting the functional information about the organ. Single photon emission computed tomography acquire multiple planar views of the radioactivity in an organ. Keep on, I am keep on emphasizing this particular point you are getting the multiple views of the radioactivity. Take an organ, take an, take an image, rotate the camera, take other image, rotate the camera, take other image in which you are basically rotating the cameras all around the body and taking the image. The sequential planar views acquired during tomographic acquisition are called projection views. What exactly was projection views? The photons are being emitted. It is directly going, hitting the target that is a detector, detectors, electrons, PM tubes, final circuitry and getting the image. You are getting one projection view. You have to get the projection view all around it. Once you get the projection all around it, from algorithms you can able to construct the organ in three dimensional way. The data are then processed mathematically to create cross sectional views of the organ. SPECT utilizes a single photon emission by gamma emitting radionuclides technetium, gallium, indium and iodine 123. Most of these isotopes are having single photons, but they have other photons. But I, as I said to you, technetium 99 is the workhorse because it is giving 140 keV photon which is a monoenergetic. This is in contrast to the positron emission tomography which utilizes pair 511 to 2 photons. PET uses the radioisotope which is positron emitter. What does positron does? Positron comes out, hits the electron, annihilation takes place, two photons are coming in two different directions, opposite to each other in 180 degree and of final 11 kV and finally the mechanism is same, it goes and hits the detector. But detector in case of PET is different than SPECT which we are going to cover up in next presentation about PET. The simplest Camera design for SPECT imaging is similar to that of planar camera but with two additional features. What does it mean? It means to say 
initially we came with a retinal scanner then came with gamma camera and gamma camera with kind of motion is called spec with having a ct also first is the spec camera is constructed so that hat can rotate either step wise or continuously about the patient to acquire multiple views our main objective is not to get 2d image our objective is to get the 3d image of the organ which is in 3d in shape second it it is equipped with a computer that integrates the multiple images to produce the cross sectional view of the organ reason is when the image is being is being constructed by using a uh, different kind of reconstruction techniques what does it you can able to see the organ is moving you can able to see the heart movement how the heart is moving what is the ejection fraction what is the viability where is the hot spot everything you can come to know by this so they are having two mechanism first is first and second is first is acquiring and finally processing the image using computer or reconstruction techniques the more advanced spec camera designs have more than one head or are constructed with a ring of detectors now what does it mean initially the gamma camera when we talk about we have the gamma camera having a detector who can take the images from one angle anterior posterior right lateral left lateral but spec camera is more advanced they can able to rotate in particular way or now we have a uh, cameras where ring of detectors is there when we talk about ct or pet ct is and all in the case of single and multiple head cameras the head are mechanically rotated around the patient to obtain the multiple projection views what does it mean we have a two heads we have a three head camera the camera rotated all around it the photon which is being emitted is going to be captured by detector and you can create an image it means the detector moves either step wise or continuously around the patient to acquire the photon which is being emitted and then construct the image ring detectors have a ring of individual small crystals or a single donut shaped crystal that does not rotate what in the ring detectors they have a single individual small crystals or a single crystal donut shaped crystal that does not rotate it, it means detectors are not rotating it is in the form of ring detectors are all around it detector is not rotating but you are able to detect from all angles the emission which is taking place on the patient body this is a type of camera as i shown you previously where the detector is moving all around it but here you see the crystal is in ring shaped it means what exactly is happening what is the advantage of this kind of thing is that within less time you can able to detect all around it all around the emission which is taking place on the patient body this is a single donut shaped crystal means you can able to see ring where the crystal is there and the emission which is taken place being detected by the detectors and finally you can able to get the image all around it now comes spec uh, which is a single photon emission computer tomography angle of rotation single headed camera must rotate a full 360 degree to obtain all necessary views of most organs in contrast each head of a double headed camera need rotate only half as far 180 degree and a triple head camera only 120 degree topped in the same views what does it means whether a single head camera is there or a dual head camera is there or a triple head camera is there only to acquire the images from different angle what single head has to do single has has to move all around the patient in 360 degree 360 degree and keep on taking the images from all around it what the dual head does mostly most of the cameras which are available in our country is dual head it has to rotate 180 degree but if you have triple head what does it mean there are three heads are there it has to rotate only 120 degree to cover the 360 degree the cost of additional head must be balanced against the benefit of increased speed of acquisition really what exactly happen if you have a single head you can able to get the image but you have to keep rotating the cameras all around the patient you miss miss some kind of information which is the advantage you can have in dual head camera dual head camera has to rotate 180 degree triple head 120 degree it doesn't mean ki 120 degree camera is going to be much more advantage than uh, dual head camera to so always to have a dual head camera 
because triple head camera though uh, the angle of rotation is 120 degree each but it is not going to have much advantage over the dual head camera. So that is why it has been clearly mentioned that in order to have an additional head we must balance okay, what benefits really we are going to have in case of acquisition is concerned. Now this is a triple head camera as I to showed you a dual head camera in the previous presentation. I showed you a single gantry also do not typed angle of rotation you see each detector has to rotate 120 degree to complete the 360 degree rotation. This is again a spec. Arc acquisition what does it mean basically our job our, 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 our objective is to get the images all around it. Tomographic projection uh, views are most often acquired over an arc of 360 over 90 degree because when we want to say the image is anterior posterior it is fine but really we want to see the organ which is 3 dimensional certain depth then really we have to go for 360 degree. The 360 degree arc or 360 arc of rotation of camera heads is uh, regularly used for most organs. The 180 degree arc is used for organs that are positioned on one side of the body such as heart. You can able to see it you do not require a 360 degree because by a 180 degree you can able to see the heart at two different directions. And views of the heart uh, are obtained in a 180 degree arc extending from right anterior oblique position to a left posterior oblique position. It means to say if at all you want to see the heart you really do not require the camera to rotate all around the body and take a 360 degree arc of rotation but 180 degree can do it. But uh, for information there are new different kind of cameras are available that is uh, categorically mentioned for heart, heart because the director is very good and it is going to give a good quality image as far as heart, uh, uh, the images of heart is concerned. But this presentation or this particular slide text about K, it is not necessary K, every time you should have a 360 degree rotation in order to get a power quality image. Now again when we talk about uh, arc acquisition, the data from this monetary is considered adequate because uh, you can able to see uh, as I mentioned in my previous slide that uh, some of the organs which are uh, which are there in the body at one particular uh, which are there in one particular place uh, no need to have a 360 degree. The 180 degree itself is uh, quite good enough. But again it totally depends ke, uh, the time constraint and the time if at all really the physician wants to see some other deformities or some other information about that particular organ which you can able to see in 180 degree you can have to rotate in 360 degree to get the three dimensional view and able to find out okay which particular muscle or which particular organ is uh, giving uh, some kind of uh, some kind of deformities or some kind of abnormalities. Now comes to uh, single photon emission computer tomography again. The number of uh, projection tomography image as uh, we were talking about um, 360 degree, 180 degree, uh, the slices not because detector is uh, moving all around it and now we have detectors or CT which are uh, 64 slices or 128 slices and similarly 32 slices. So, over a full 360 degree arc 64 or 128 uh, tomography projection are usually collected similarly 32 or 64 views are generally obtained over a 180 degree arc. It means to say ki the taking the slices uh, is very very important because it is coupled with CT. So, it is not only giving the picture of uh, functional but in order to have an anatomy because finally we have to fuse these two images. And aspect uh, CT when we talk about the CT part when it comes single portion emission computer tomography is basically uh, making the image uh, you can say the anatomy the anat uh, functional images but uh, in order to know the real uh, depth of the disease you require a CT part to be included that is why I call hybrid spec CT. Um, and in such case what exactly happen the anatomy and the fuse and the uh, function images are to be fused to get a good quality image and so that uh, physician can able to decide okay which is the location uh, where the disease is there. So hybrid technology nowadays are playing very very important role. Now collection time is very very important as I told okay, for a given dose of radio pharmaceutical better images are generated using the higher counting statistics from longer acquisition our patient comfort and cooperations limit imaging times 
acquisition times are 20 to 40 seconds per projection views are standard. What does it actually means to say that uh, you have injected an in, uh, activity and the activity has gone to the patient. Now that depends after few hours. It may so happen you have to take a delayed images or it may happen you have to take a dynamic uh, images. When the activity has gone inside the body, definitely emission starts. Uh, but we have to see to it when the activity is in the blood pool and uh, when it is going to the, the organ of the choice. So the acquisition time is also very, very important. But we have to see the patient comfort also when the patient is on the couch, how we can make him comfortable. That is again the two important aspect has to be seen to it. Sometimes uh, the protocol says that, okay, that the patient has to be there for this much of time, for this much of activities to be administered. But again, acquisition and activity depends on many factors like uh, a patient who is a child patient, pediatric patient or who is a bulky patient in such kind of how much activities to be administered. And when you are doing, uh, when you are taking the scan, uh, you feel that sometimes acquisition time is less or acquisition time is more because for construction of the images, you require some kind of counts. What is counts? Counts is nothing but a number of photons which is being emitted. And until unless you get that much of counts, um, the activity or you can say the image is not going to be good quality image. So the two important parameters which has to be seen to it are the protocols which has already been fed in the computers. Okay, okay this particular um, uh, this particular scan takes this much of time and to, uh, this much activity to be given. Because uh, for a good quality image, it is not required that uh, you give a less activity and keep acquiring the image for longer time. Because uh, finally, uh, your objective is to get number of counts. Because number of counts is only um, uh, going to give the image to you. Because when the projection data is collected and uh, different algorithms are to be used, uh, because there are some kind of random counts are there, some kind of attenuation is there, those corrections are to be done. So, we require a certain substantial uh, amount of counts to, um, to make a uh, data. But it does not mean that you give a less activity and keep on acquiring by the time the patient moves because the patient is not comfortable on the couch for longer time. And it is not advisable also that uh, for because the patient is not comfortable uh, and you want to finish the scan in lesser time, give a larger activity. Because what happens usually, instead of uh, X quantity, uh, you are giving Y quantity, uh, you are doubling the dose, uh, doubling the dose and because you want to finish, uh, you want to take more count. Because and what exactly is happening in such cases, you are basically uh, giving more dose to the patient. Because no, the quality of the images is there, but uh, you are unnecessarily giving the dose to the patient to get the images. So, this is basically a, a very, very important that uh, uh, how much activity to be given and for how long uh, this acquisition is to be done to get a good quality because our objective is that the scan should be finished in minimum time with uh, uh, with a minimum time with less activity and it should not be so happened ki while doing so we are missing the information and that is why the reason is we uh, quality assurance or QA plays a very very important role because sometimes it is observed that you are basically uh, taking the image uh, of a camera where the some of the PM tubes are not functioning. What exactly happened? If some of the PM tubes are not functioning and the gain is not there or they are not sensitive or they have been deteriorated because of uh, time span, then what exactly is happening is you are basically trying to give more activity to get counts which has been not been getting with some of the PM tubes. So, uh, you are uh, administering the activity uh, and you are giving more dose to that particular organ. See, whenever the medical examination is taking place, uh, we know okay, there are no limits for uh, medical exposure, but it does not mean uh, you are going to give uh, more activity to the patient and to get the scan done. So, optimization is to be done in a very, very systematical and very, very uh, in, in a manner so that the examine the quality you get a good quality by giving less dose and a less time and less comfort and good quality image. What are the advantages uh, as we are talking in uh, uh, by for respect by this time that localization of defect is more precise and more clearly seen by inexperienced eye. What does it mean? Inexperienced eye does not mean can any doctor can able to see it, but yeah, 
If a doctor is having certain kind of experience, he can able to find out, okay, this is the place where there is a hot spot, where there is kind of abnormalities uh, that has to be seen. And extent and size of defect is better defined uh, because if at all you can able to, if you are able to um, uh, see the see the image and you can able to find, uh, you can able to resolve that image, you can able to say that, okay, this is the place uh, where the disease is there and uh, doctors can able to decide the future course of action. Images free of background, um, which is one of the most important thing, free of background, what does it mean and what is the advantage it is having during the scanning purpose. Because if you are going to take the scan uh, at a place where the background addition is very high, then what will happen? It is going to disrupt, disrupt your images. Similarly, if any already contamination has taken place at some point, whether it is on detector, whether it is on the couch, and when you are taking the image, you find some kind of, you know, some kind of uh, hot spot over there, and you say that the patient is having some problem. The disease is the patient, but no, it is not like that. It is disease with the it is a contamination problem, it is a problem in the couch or maybe some detector. So we have to really see to it uh, what are the advantages over there, but we have to look, look into it key, what are the disadvantages it can have because of contamination problems or uh, because of some kind of QA problems uh, which is one of the most important thing we have to see to it. Now we have, we know okay, how the spec functions and um, there are a few examples we can see uh, where the imaging is being done, like heart imaging. If you want to see the functioning of the heart, like viability studies or myocardial infarct is there, how much heart is functioning, there are rest studies and stress studies being done, and how much your heart can take the load. So, uh, it is one of the major application in case of heart imaging. Similarly, brain imaging when we talk about, if some of the brain part is not functioning properly and uh, either you get to go for MRI, but MRI gives some kind of image to you, no doubt about it. But if you really want to see uh, if, uh, okay, what exactly is the problem which you cannot able to detect uh, from the MRI, then I think SPECT is referred because at that time the radio pharmaceutical being used to go to the brain and from there you can able to find out okay, which part is having a problem or uh, whether some tumor is there uh, which requires surgeries and all those things because SPECT uh, as I told you okay, MRI gives uh, the image to you in an anatomical way uh, but you want to do the function and function is able to find out from uh, nuclear medicine and SPECT is one of the good modality to do that, whole body imaging. Uh, it may so happen uh, some part of your body like uh, bones and all those things, uh, we don't know because you have done the bone scan done and you find out some kind of BMDs and all those things uh, by other kind of modalities, yeah, there is some kind of density changes. But if you really want to see it, okay, which particular part of the, um, uh, you can say in the whole body, the problem is there in the bones and all those things, that particular spec plays a very, very important role. Now comes to the tumor detection. As uh, I referred, okay, nowadays uh, tumor detection is very, very important thing. Suppose in oncology, the patient has been diagnosed with a cancer, a tumor in very early stages and uh, which is possible in case of by SPECT only because MRI could not able to find, MRI found that there is a problem but really uh, SPECT you can able to the function, you can able to find a depth, location and by using spec CTs and uh, you can able to really uh, find a good quality image. Uh, then when the tumor is detected and um, uh, either the surgery is done or chemotherapy is given or radiation is given, then you really wants to see um, how the progression takes place whether the tumor uh, which has been detected has been treated is, or some kind of further uh, ex uh, examinations or further treatment is required. So, SPECT plays a very, very important role. Bone scans because sometimes you have problem in the bones and all those things and you are feeling tired, you are taking the medicines, but there are certain reasons that uh, the bone deformities are there or some kind of, uh, you can say, mats are there in the bones because uh, it has been seen that when the tumor has been detected at one particular location, you find uh, mats in certain other places like spine, like other bones and all those things. So their spec plays a very, very important role to see to it after treatment or before the treatment or during bone scans if any problem is there or not. 
In summary, we should say that uh, SPECT uh, single photon emission computer tomography being a nuclear medicine imaging modality, it has all the advantages and disadvantages of nuclear medicine and can be highly beneficial or dangerous on the application, so is SPECT. Why even say disadvantages? When we talk about radioactivity, if you are not using properly, if uh, some kind of misadministration is taking place, but it is more very advantages. In spite of this today, uh, nearly all cardiac patient receives uh, planar ECT or SPECT as part of the workup to detect and stage coronary artery disease. No doubt uh, the gold standard as far as heart is concerned is uh, angiography. The cardiologist feel that angiography is a gold standard to find out the functioning of the heart. But if you really see nuclear medicine, uh, where without non-visive, you can able to find without putting the catheter and all those things, you can just uh, give thallium or technetium 99 m, uh, maybe um, or my view, uh, you can able to find the heart is functioning and then you can able to treat it. So. If you see that nuclear medicine uh, SPECT is playing a very, very important role as far as functioning and anatomical images are concerned. And in today's world, uh, I think uh, nuclear medicine is one of the very important modalities and um, without, without uh, invasive procedure, non-invasively you can able to detect uh, the disease in an early stage and you can able to treat it. So, um, SPECT is one of the most important thing. With this, uh, thank you very much.